Texas. Looks a lot like New Mexico, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, anyway, man, so didn't sleep a whole lot this week. Had a lot of things going on. Uh, lots of stuff with the website and the podcast and all this different stuff. Uh, have a new baby that's being cooked right now inside of my wife's stomach. So that's cool. Uh, have a almost two-year-old. So, you know, just you don't really sleep much anyway. Uh, but today, he decided to wake up at 3.30. And I didn't go to bed last night until like 11. Uh, so I just got up with him so my pregnant wife could sleep. And uh, he he's just been in a sassy mood. He's not feeling too good. He's growing some more teeth. So... In 10 miles, turn right onto West Amarillo Boulevard. Well, you can shut your mouth, Siri. Um, but anyway, she's such a... <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so super tired. Um, but just cruising through Texas. I still have like four and a half hours to go. And uh, then I'm meeting up with Chris. We're going to grab some goodies. Hopefully grab some food. Uh, and then we're gonna just go out and uh, make sure all the sites are set up for the hogs, the, the bait stations. And uh, yeah, so there's uh, update number one of this trip. Well, this is it guys. This is gonna be home for the next few days. Um, and I have to say, I really like it. Feels natural. Um, Chris has given me the big bed. It's funny because he's sleeping on like a tiny thing like that and he's like seven feet tall, so. But whatever. He said he normally takes that one. But this is it. This is where the magic is gonna happen. And by that I mean sleep. Morning number one here and uh, man slept like a freaking baby with no covers aka not very well but it doesn't matter so Chris what's the plan for this morning man all my years of killing pigs the best way I've found to kill them is to set up a ambush ambush I like that <laughs> so we're gonna ambush them hell yeah brother well We'll catch you guys back in the field. All right, guys, so we have the Element Optics Titan on here, and uh, we threw it on the Air Saber. We 
had a little trouble with the mounts um, for the old helix. So I threw that on the dream line and we're just trying to uh, get this thing sighted in now and probably the world's first and last Boomerx Air Saber with a Element Titan on there. All right guys, so day two, we haven't gotten any hogs yet. We haven't even seen any, we've seen a bunch of deer. Um, but man, we got Chris down that way. He is checking the cameras. He's got the trail cams and everything. And uh, we're gonna run the cards, see what's showing up and make a game plan. We're probably gonna have to come out here and do an all nighter sleep in a blind, that kind of thing, but whatever it takes. Sorry if you're listening to this with headphones on in the dark while you're supposed to be sleeping because this probably sounds so creepy, but also you're welcome. So after two nights of getting our tails handed to us, we headed back to camp to get some food and recoup. Got a little bit of target practice in while we ate and we game plan to figure out which stands to go to. Came up on this cute little Texas rat snake and we went out for night three, no pigs, 
And even on night four, again, no pigs. But there was at least some good development that came out of night four. All right, guys, so we are refilling the feeders right now. Uh, last night was crazy because one, we sat in the stand for a thousand hours. Nothing came in except for some raccoons. So I figured, heck, I'll take a shot at a raccoon. And from way down there to here, a little over 60 yards. And I missed to the left and we were like, hmm, that's weird. So we started walking in about, I don't know, 12 yards from the blind, we found the arrow and it had no tip on it. And that means it's still like 48 yards from where we shot. So what had happened was the end of the arrow from the air saber, just the broadhead, just popped off the end of the arrow. And that's why I missed because it just was tumbling through the air. So, and that's the arrow that I'd been loading on the saber the whole time. Had we taken that shot at a hog, maybe it would have hit it, but it wouldn't have done anything. And that would have just been even more disappointing than not being able to take a shot at him. So we're double checking again with the arrows. We're putting some more corn in everything. We'll get a hog and I can go home a champion. Otherwise, I am gonna shoot an armadillo from point blank pretty much because they can't even tell that you're there. And I'm gonna go home with an armadillo shell helmet. A pig goes over here to feed in this brush. Another pig happens to walk by and gets that scent. He can follow it right into the tree. Once they know where it is, then it can, it'll can it just become part of their, their day as long as you have bait on the ground. So even if there's a new pig that doesn't know where this is, we just opened up our chances of him coming into our bait as far as the pigs go that come and you know, get that scent on them. So it works for sure, that's been there for couple years and you can see you know the whole experience. I like it. Good stuff. So total curveball, uh, we were getting here to the stand. This is our last night. It's about four o'clock and Chris and I walked up and uh, we were expecting, hopefully based on the trail cam footage for the hogs to show up around seven or 7.30. And as we were walking up, they, uh, they were already here. So now I'm setting back up and hoping for another group of hogs to come back in right around hopefully seven like they did yesterday. And this time I have a, clear shot and I hopefully can get the job done if they come in, praying that they do. So we're waiting for the pigs to come in, but they're not coming in like they did last night. Last night they came in at 7, and right now it's 7.32, but I just got a text from Chris that said, I saw a pile of pigs moving my way, so to sit tight and see if they don't come in. So, dear Lord, let me get a pig, please. Amen.
Man, guys, I can't tell you how fun this hunt was. And I got so much footage and so many pictures. There's over two and a half hours of footage alone. And that's only recording in the parts of the day that I could see. So you can imagine how much more footage there would be with the actual time in the blinds, out in the field, going for the hogs and that kind of thing. But this was so much fun and it was an incredible experience to get to do this with an air gun and it being my very first big game hunt, it was cool to get that done with an air gun as well. And we had the right optics, we had the right tools, and I had the right guide, aka Chris, and he knew what he was doing and he did it very well. He also can clean a hog in no time flat, so that's a bonus. We were able to get this thing on ice and save ourselves a little bit of it so that we could cook it over the fire and enjoy the spoils of a successful and a well-earned hunt. We got Chris tenderizing the uh, tenderloins. On an axe. On an axe through the ice bag that we used <laughs> using two spatulas. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. Because that's how you do things out here, okay? That's how I do things out here. Hey guys, uh, thanks for checking out this video. It was quite a freaking hunt. Um, this was night four that we hunted. This is my fifth night here. First night just got in and got everything settled. But uh, man, this was quite the hunt. What do you think, Chris? It was tough, but we did it. Persistence. We did. Bait and wait. They were eating the bait. It was just, we were in one spot, they're in another, but eventually we lined it up. Made it happen. Now we got delicious tenderloins for the grill. Yeah, so we're uh, rewarding ourselves with a fresh kill. Uh, even though it's not all about the kill, that does make it feel a lot better. And thank you to Element Optics for sending us the optics to review. Uh, probably the one and only <laughs> Umarex Air Saber with a Element Titan on there. A little bit too much scope for the gun, but it got the job done. The Illuminated Reticle was really awesome. Chris, you got any uh, insight on that? The the illuminated reticle on the scope is a is a game changer because crosshairs tend to disappear against like this these black black pigs. So knowing exactly where your you know your dot is and not having to have light on this side of the pig, it, that that's worth it right there. That's if you're gonna hunt at night and you're gonna hunt with a scope rifle, a scope gun of any kind, get illuminated. Illuminated reticle, guys. Well, we're gonna enjoy this nice meal, have ourselves a good fire session, and thank you guys for joining. If you want to check out more from the Airgun Podcast, just go to theairgunpodcast.com, and you can find an episode where I'm gonna be recording with Chris. We're gonna talk about this hunt, and then Chris's story, and how he got into all this crazy stuff, being a Texas boy. So, thanks for watching. If you guys like the video, just give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, you'll see more content like this. Peace.
<laughs> you did it! <laughs> <laughs>